And now that we've uh, made a to-do list for the U.S. president, let's also tell you how he keeps going back on his stand every single time. Kashmir is just one example. Trump is a habitual U-turner. Washington's foremost allies have been at the receiving end of Donald Trump's about face. Take a look. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. The world is losing count of U-turns by Donald Trump. The U.S. president has a knack of confounding friends and foes alike, be it India when it comes to Jammu and Kashmir or China on the issue of trade. On 22nd July, Trump told Imran Khan that Narendra Modi had spoken to him about U.S. mediation on Jammu and Kashmir. I was with Prime Minister Modi two weeks ago, and we talked about this subject. And he actually said, would you like to be a mediator or arbitrator? I said, where? He said, Kashmir. Because this has been going on for many, many years. I was surprised at how long it's been going on. Along. 70 years. I think they'd like to see it resolved, and I think you'd like to see it resolved. And if I can help, I would love to be a mediator. New Delhi was not amused. The Indian ambassador to the United States, Harsh Shringla, said in an interview to a private U.S. channel, and I quote, President Trump has made it very clear that his offer to mediate on Jammu and Kashmir is dependent on both India and Pakistan accepting it. Since India has not accepted the offer of mediation, he has made it clear that this is not on the table anymore. Since then, Trump and some of his aides have walked back on their comments. On 17th August, Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley issued the following statement, I quote, Today, President Donald J. Trump spoke with Prime Minister Imran Khan of Pakistan to discuss regional developments and to follow up on the Prime Minister's successful visit to Washington, D.C. last month. The President conveyed the importance of India and Pakistan reducing tensions through bilateral dialogue regarding the situation in Jammu and Kashmir. The two leaders further discussed how they will continue to build on the growing relationship between the United States and Pakistan and the momentum created during their recent meeting at the White House. But Trump was not done. He sprung a surprise by harping on mediation again. Prime Minister Khan was here just recently and I was with, I'm going to be with Prime Minister Modi. Uh, I'll be with him over the weekend in France. So, you know, I think we're helping the situation, but there's tremendous uh, problems between those two countries, as you know, and I will do the best I can to mediate or do something. Since Trump came to power, he has made a number of embarrassing U-turns. Take, for instance, his position on Chinese telecom major Huawei. Earlier this year, his government blacklisted Huawei after determining that the Chinese company was a national security risk. It meant that U.S. companies were barred from sharing technology with Huawei without government approval. Then, Washington announced a partial rollback when Trump allowed a 90-day extension. The U.S. government has since given Huawei another reprieve. It has allowed another extension of 90 days. The further extension enables smaller U.S. companies which do business with Huawei more time to shift away from the Chinese telecom company. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, is another good example. Candidate Trump slammed NATO during his 2016 election campaign, calling it obsolete and relying on American financial support. It was formed to look over the Soviet Union which doesn't even exist anymore. We're spending so much money disproportionately, the United States, which is you, all of us. We're not talking about small money, folks. We're talking about serious, serious money, okay? We're not only taking care of Germany, we're not only taking care of Japan, this, that, that, and so many, but NATO, many countries, and they're not paying their bills. But soon, President Trump sang a different tune. He became more conciliatory in his approach to the organization. The Secretary General and I had a productive discussion about what more NATO can do in the fight against terrorism. I complained about that a long time ago, and they made a change. And now they do fight terrorism. I said it was obsolete. It's no longer obsolete. 
It's my hope that NATO will take on an increased role in supporting our Iraqi partners in their battle against ISIS. On Afghanistan, Trump had said that his instinct was to immediately withdraw U.S. troops from the country. But in August 2017, while announcing Washington's South Asia strategy, Trump said that an immediate withdrawal would make Afghanistan and the U.S. vulnerable to terror attacks. Before Trump was elected to power, he was against an intervention in Syria. But once he came to occupy the White House, Trump ordered missile strikes inside Syria. Russia is another example of a Trump U-turn. In his election campaign, Trump spoke about wanting to improve ties with Russia. But all that changed after the US intervened in Syria, where Russia is supporting Syria's president, Bashar al-Assad. And finally, on China. As a candidate for president in 2016, Trump trained his guns on China. But since then, he has turned pragmatic, cooperating and competing with China at the same time. If he sought out Beijing over talks with North Korea, he has not shied away from imposing trade tariffs on China. Clearly, for someone who prides himself in the art of the deal, he faces trouble explaining his frequent U-turns. Bureau report, Beyond World is One.